Hello everybody, it is a Monday, it is Easter Monday, so I have a day off and I was gonna spend my day cleaning the windows, but it's kind of a rainy weather <laughs> at the moment, it stops and my excuse is gone. <laughs> but so I cleaned those windows, the outside, should do the inside as well, I guess. Ugh. I should do my balcony. I'm not looking forward to it, but I guess I will do it. Um, I have been listening to The Memory of Souls, the third book in A Course of Dragons while I'm doing that. So I'll be continuing with that. And I'm also reading The Traitor Queen by Trudy Canavan. I am almost done with that one, actually. Like, I didn't have that much to go to begin with. So where did I stop yesterday evening? I did read more than I expected to. I think I've already read like a hundred pages today basically in this book. Um, and so we're down to the wire here. So this is the third book in the Traitor Spy trilogy, which is a sequel trilogy to the Black Magician trilogy in which we were following Sonia, who was a street urchin who found out that she had magical powers, but magical powers were only assumed to be like only an ability was assumed to have magical powers. And so there's not a whole lot more that I can dive into with that. But so the second trilogy is taking place 20 years after the first original trilogy. And after the second book in that trilogy, I was like totally pumped to continue on. The first one was kind of a warm up. Uh, and so the second one really got me pumped for the new stakes and for the new storylines that we've been getting in this one. And in this one, I will say that like some of the storylines have been a little bit more passive than I would have liked to see them be. Uh, we have lost a uh, character in this book, which was kind of sad, though I actually like the way we lost that character, but I cannot really dive into that, I guess. But we lost that character basically in a sort of like normal world ending, <laughs> let's call it like that, which I actually like seeing in fantasy. I like it when fantasy, you know, in fantasy we have the tendency to have everybody die in like a battle or using magic or something like that, or in betrayals or something like that. I don't think I often see fantasy resorting to like real world deaths or just to like natural deaths all that often. But so um, that was included in this one and I did definitely like that. I am also rooting for a few romances and so it's kind of getting to the wire where you're like, oh, is somebody going to die um, within this one? But so we are getting down to the wire and I will definitely, I think I will definitely finish still today. But so I'm gonna make myself clean the balcony. Uh, Jesus, the balcony will, like, the balcony is made off of glass, sadly. So, like, why? Why make that decision? Because <laughs> now I have to clean that glass. Um, but so, yeah, I'm gonna do that. And while I'm doing that, I am listening to the audiobook for The Memory of Souls, which I will talk to you guys about a little bit later. So, yeah. That's Belgian weather for you guys. Um, it is April the 5th, it is Easter Monday, and it is snowing. <laughs> also, I just cleaned those uh, windows on my balcony, and now you're gonna snow all over them. Thank you for that. So, uh, you know, my hair is a mess at the moment, because <laughs> when I was um, cleaning my windows, it's um, totally like my hair went every every which direction in the wind. So yeah, it's not really looking great now. But so I finished The Trader Queen by Trudy Canahan. So I finished the Trader Spy trilogy. And I gotta say, I'm a little bit disappointed with the final one. I was just so excited after the second one. I had just loved the second one so much and had been so excited about all the perspectives of what is going to happen in that final one. Or, you know, what the storylines for all of them are going to be in that final one. And I gotta say, I was somewhat disappointed there because I think my main disappointment came with, with like one storyline at least at the very beginning. That storyline was quite passive for a while. Then it did start to develop a little bit more later on in the book, but that felt like a very passive storyline in the beginning. And then once that became more active, or around the time that that came more active, another storyline also had a character that became more passive, and I feel like that character 
was more or less somewhat passive throughout this book. There wasn't a whole lot that this character was doing throughout the book. And that I found to be a little bit sad. Also, like, the final sort of, like, showdown moment of this series felt a little bit anticlimactic, felt a little bit too easily resolved. But so yeah, I still enjoyed it. I think it's a great one for character work. There's a lot of character work and I've really loved um, getting to follow these characters again, fall back in love with these characters, um, rooting for certain sort of like friendships to develop that I hadn't really expected to be rooting for. Um, you know, going into this book, if you had told me about, you know, these two characters or this type of character and that type of character, then I would have been like, mm, I don't know what, I, what my deal would be with that. But I did find myself rooting for a few of those types of storylines. Uh, and so I did really enjoy that. But um, I will still say that like the world building isn't the most elaborate. And I think that because of the fact that some of the storylines in this last one felt a little bit underwhelming, that became a little bit too much of like I had a little bit too much problems versus payouts and so I think this third one kind of let me down a little bit so I would say that out of this tri this sec sequel trilogy I actually mainly enjoyed the second one but so now we are seven o'clock at night I have made myself some pancakes it is snowing and uh, Gavin is going to start sprinting so I'll probably just be listening a little bit to Memory of Souls um, or maybe I should in principle be editing as well at some point, but I'm still very much in the procrastinating mood when it comes to editing. I really haven't been a great creator recently. I've been really kind of slagging when it comes to making videos, editing videos, especially the editing part. I mean, the making part is not like I'm dying to make videos at the moment, but I am getting around to the filming part, but the editing part is... Once again, in an editing slump with that, so it would be better to edit now, but I'm probably going to be reading. Hey guys, so <laughs> don't mind my hair. I was too lazy to wake up early this morning in order to shower it before work and so it's looking like a mess and so i tied it up together but it's way too short to be able to tie it together so it's a very original hairstyle now i guess but so i am going to be editing now work day is over and i need to edit a video i need to stop the cycle of procrastination so what am I going to do? It's a super unhealthy uh, pattern that I'm developing here because this is the second time that I'm doing this. I am going to order myself takeout and edit in the meantime. And then the takeout is going to be my reward for having edited. <laughs> so it's not the most healthy of um, sort of like patterns to always reward yourself with junk food whenever you finish uh, editing. So, but I've done it only this will be the second time that I've done it like that. And so I'm hoping to develop a new pattern. My new pattern is going to be the day in which a video comes out is the day in which I'm editing the next video. So tomorrow is when the video that I'm editing now should be coming out. And so tomorrow I need to edit again <laughs> for Friday's video. And on Friday I should be editing another video. And that's where we end up with problems because I might not have a video pre-filmed. I do have one, but I'm not entirely happy with the way that that filming went. So we'll have to see. But in any case, that's the pattern I'm trying to develop. That's where we're going for. food arrived. So I'm not done with editing. That's never the case when I do this sort of um, incentive thing. It's more like to get me started on it. So I still have like 
six to eight minutes of like the first cut to go through but the first cut is like it's pretty close to the final one it's just that I'll have to get some more of the ums out of there for example and then I'll probably like depending on the length I have to try and cut something more but I think I'm pretty okay lengthwise at the moment and so then I'll have to add like some of the titles and things like that to the video so it's actually looking better than I thought it was so it is still like a relatively decent um, time of editing that I'm gonna have with this one so I'm just going to be eating my dinner now um, listening a little bit to Memory of Souls already during uh, Spoops' sprints and then I'll be editing that final piece of this video so I think it's probably also time to talk a little bit about the Memory of Souls. So um, I started the Memory of Souls yesterday. I mean, I listened to like half an hour on Sunday as well. But uh, this is a third book in A Course of Dragons. So in principle, I cannot say too much about it, of course, without spoiling a whole lot. Like basically it's still relatively spoiler free to some extent. So the first two books are actually kind of in conjunction with one another. They're basically more or less the same timeline, but we're looking at Kieran and we're looking at Janelle's perspective. And so the third one, I was actually expecting it was going to be like the same time period, but then one of the third sort of like, there are four characters that have a prophecy link to them, which we find out about throughout the stories that we don't really find out about the specific um, prophecy neither. And so we were kind of expecting each one of the first four to really dive into one of these four characters. And I was kind of expecting that to be that same timeline. But so now in this third one, the timeline is moving forward. So we are moving forward past the end point of the second book. Um, and we are not, we haven't gone really into the past again. We've basically actually had... Um, so each of these stories, like I'm making this so complex, each of these stories has a frame story and then within the frame story we have a story being told by two different characters and so we have alternative, alternating um, storytellers. Sometimes that means alternating timelines as well between these two storytellers uh, and in this case the frame story has moved further into the future from where we left off at the end of book two and then the story within a story takes off after the second book ended um, and so that means we've got some cast members together for the majority of this book some cast members we've been dying to see together because there are certain ships that are built within book one within book two mainly both both of them are kind of built within book one though one of them is more expanded upon within book two and so there is hope i mean i know that the ship is sailing during this book and I'm dying for it. I cannot wait. I want it. I want it so bad. But so I'm uh, really enjoying it so far. We have once again also been diving into some sort of like interesting world building elements having to do with sex and gender. I've talked about this before that, you know, uh, one of the things that we dived into with the second one was this sort of like society in which sex and gender are very much separate things. And so Janelle is actually a character who is biologically female but she considers herself a stallion which would in which would more or less correspond with our sort of like stereotypical idea of what a man is and then um in this one we've also dived into the sort of idea of this race of do we call them humans and still on times they're not humans but i imagine them looking the way that humans look but i could be totally wrong there but so there's this particular race uh, and they kind of all start out male and then they can transform into female at a later stage. So these sort of elements I think are very interesting and they're actually very rewarding elements to use in fantasy because not only can you comment on our sort of like real world and on issues in our real world, but it's also just new territory for the exploration of culture, for the exploration of society because, you know, a lot of these fantasy stories start to rely on certain world building elements that we've seen time and time again is so it's this is another way in which you can enrich your world in which you can create new things within your world and so really enjoying that one and so 
eager to dive back into the story now and see how, when, when some of this ship is gonna come down. Friday evening guys so <laughs> as I just showed I have just watched Jurassic Park those who don't know Jurassic Park is one of my favorite movies of all times I also love the book so yeah I just like I was watching a live show of some people who were doing reading sprints and somebody was mentioning that they were reading Jurassic Park and that's just enough to get me going so I was like now I need to watch Jurassic Park because it's been too long. So I just immediately caved to that. And so I've just rewatched Jurassic Park and I've got some Jurassic Park um, gear in my shopping cart online that I'm going to try not to order because I really don't need Jurassic Park hoodies or whatever. But um, you might see that in an upcoming vlog at some points. Good morning guys, it's Saturday, I'm about to go and hop into the shower, but you know, when I was in bed I was really thinking of like, uh, maybe I'll walk to the Starbucks and then I'll walk to like a park on the other side of Leuven and I'll sit down and read outside, but it is raining! It is a rainy day in Belgium, of course, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's so much for these plans. And I don't feel like doing my original plans for today, which was filming three videos. <laughs> so we'll just have to see, I guess, what this afternoon ends up bringing. Um, maybe I need to look up the weather. I never look up the weather and <laughs> maybe I should start doing so. I'll look up the weather. If it's good weather tomorrow, then I guess I'll push through the fact that I don't want to do it and film some videos right now. If it's gonna be the same weather tomorrow, might as well postpone filming until tomorrow and just take today to read a lot. My kind of goal was filming a lot today and reading a lot tomorrow, um, but at the moment I'm just really feeling like reading. And the problem is I love reading with rain sounds in the background, so... Alright, so I ordered vegetable tempura. And I've just eaten all the vegetable parts and now I see that there are two prawns in there. Now, it's fine, I guess, because I am a pescatarian, but I do try to limit the fish consumption. And basically, actually, part of the reason why I ended up with vegetarian sushi in the end yesterday is because I... Um, it's because I had been feeling like I was eating way too much fish lately. So now I end up with two shrimp tempura on my plate. And I mean, in any case, the fact that I ordered vegetarian, everything was vegetarian, and then they bring you some fish things. So it would have been horrible if I was actually fully vegetarian. So I'm not very happy about that. I will have to check because I know they had the possibility of having a mix of vegetarian and shrimp tempura, but I'm definitely sure that I selected the fully vegetarian tempura. And then I saw that they also had the other option, but I was like, no, let's just keep my meal fully vegetarian. So I have to check this one now. It's 
So we are some like 40 pages into The Snow Leopard by Sylvain Sesson. But I gotta say, like, I mean, I'm not hating this book or anything like that. And I was warned. So when I bought the book, I had only seen like, yeah, I only knew what it was about and that there was like hype around it in France. And so I just bought it like that. And then when I added it on Goodreads, I actually checked some of the reviews and I saw that there were quite a lot of people who said that they hated the narrator of this book and that they thought that they sounded so self-involved. And I gotta say, the narrator is definitely not the best thing about this book. And like, the opening line of this book, uh, like if we forego like the introduction, the opening line of this book basically, because this is in Dutch, so I cannot really read it out to you, but basically it would translate to something like um, just like female ski instructors, um, snow leopards make love in the snow. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't know who comes up, who, like, what type of person comes up with these lines, but that is just the line that made me go, why would you draw that comparison? And it's not the only time in which there are lines that really make me go, like, oh, cringe. Um, there, like, there's been, like, the mystification of the snow leopard, which is normal. Snow leopards are very mysterious creatures, but he then compared it to, like, um, a beautiful woman in the woods or a goddess descending from uh, from the heavens. So like that whole sort of like female adoration, male gaze sort of perspective that he's putting in there sometimes really makes me go like, okay. <laughs> and so I don't really like the author that much is clear so far. And what I don't like is of course a translation, but you know, that type of highly stylized language that's being used in here will have been in the original as well. It's just like, so much like comparisons being drawn when he's trying to explain a landscape the amount of like overly stylized language that goes into that um, i like a lot more of a simplistic um, writing style especially when we're looking at like something non-fiction but i do like want to read more of this, the this the story i want to read more about you know what the experience of looking for the snow leopard and things like that uh, and so i'm in terms of my interest in this story that is not really impeding me continuing <laughs> though i will say that i have had many like eye roll moments <laughs> guy's talking about his girlfriends and <laughs> he's saying like he told her like uh, man is God's greatest um, wimp I guess I don't even know what the Dutch word means basically it's probably like a Dutch from the Netherlands words and then um, he's saying that she doesn't like that though his type of aphorisms is that what you say in English um, that she considers them to be hollow phrases. Same girl. <laughs> this is my exact feelings with this. Like, in principle, I like the journey aspect, but even I don't think that that is elaborated in a way that I like within this book so far. But he just seems like somebody who thinks he's being profound, but who's basically saying nothing profound at all. Yeah, I'll just keep going through with this now because might as well. Um, but yeah, I understand the criticism that I've read. But this is a book it won a prize. What did it, what did it win? The Prix Renaudot. Renaudot. We'll have to look it up what that is, what that prize is. If it is for bullshitting your way through a nonfiction book, then I understand it. Also, I've kind of talked about how I don't like some of his descriptions that kind of, I don't know, refer to women in a way or, um, you know, 
the weird descriptions that he's put in there. But something that's also making me com uncomfortable is every description he's giving of people who of like people who live in that area. But also when he was still in France and he was on a train and there were a couple of people of different origin in there, the way he described them, I was just like, mm, something is not sitting right with me here. And so now he's describing some of the kids in a camp that they're there and he's describing their eyes, really indicating like the slint of their eyes. And the word that's being used in Dutch especially is a word that I would definitely not I don't def I definitely don't consider a word that you should be using of course it's translation but um, I don't know I, I'm not sure what the French word of course is and whether that French word has the same connotation but it's been throughout the book that I've just felt uncomfortable with the way in which the uh, he describes the local people and so it's just another case here where i'm like mm, can do we have to refer to their sort of like um racially identifiable um traits you are in the middle of a mountain pass somewhere in tibet i think we can all imagine what the children look like without having to use words like that to describe them so yeah i don't know i just, it's really not sitting right with me. All right, guys, I cannot anymore. <laughs> I'm putting it down. So I'm really not further than I was last time I checked in with you guys, but I've been reading some of the reviews. I think I already read all the negative ones before and now I totally understand them. And I must say that I quite enjoyed some of them. It was somebody who gave the book like three stars and basically he said the three stars are for the presence of animals in this book, but uh, not for anything that the writers put in there. So um, yeah, I just cannot, I cannot, it's, it's it it's it's not worth it's part of me wants to read until we see a snow leopard but on the other hand i'm like probably that's just gonna be like the f the final part of this book because this guy is clearly not really interested in snow leopards at all <laughs> i'm just gonna put it down because it's just making me angry and the last time i had this experience with a book was when i read um what is it called uh, something, yeah, I don't know, it's a book by Bill Bryson, and it is, like, um, something with the, the little island, small island, <laughs> don't even remember, it's his travel story of Britain, um, and I did not enjoy that, because I thought that the author had a very grumpy mood, and the grumpy mood was rubbing off of me, in this case, the author does not have a grumpy mood, but his cocky attitude, his um, self-centering is really putting me off. It's very funny as well because at some point he mentions the other book about Snow Leopard that is out there um, by Matisse, I think the name is, which apparently is American. I for some reason thought it was also a French guy. And um, so this guy also took a trek to find Snow Leopards, but he never found any, I think. And he refers to that book uh, at some point. But he's kind of like brushing that book to the side as if it's worth nothing and kind of indicating that Matisse was mainly occupied with himself. And I'm like, yes, as you are in this book, but okay. <laughs> it was not for me. So that is super sad because I was really looking forward to this one. I bought this book the final day before not like somewhere in the, the final few days before lockdown because I was afraid the bookshops were going to close and I had been debating buying this book or not and now I'm like oh why the, why did I waste seven of my book buying credits on this book and I'm only gonna get one back though I have been considering changing a rule one of my reading goals for 2021 is to read books quicker and so I'm considering implementing some sort of a rule that if I buy a book in 2021 and I read it in 2021 then I get two credits for it rather than just a one. It's not a huge improvement or anything like that but it is a way to um, 
reward myself for having stuck to that goal of reading them more quickly. So I might give myself two credits for this one. <laughs> so it'll just have been a minus five operation in that case, but... Hey guys, Monday morning, time to round off this vlog. So yesterday I ended up filming three videos. I actually, I think I don't even update you guys a single time yesterday. Oops. <laughs> So I ended up um, editing three videos. I did do some reading. What did I read? I finished The Memory of Souls, of course. So I finished The Memories of Souls. Looking so, so looking forward to the fourth book in that installment. I'm not going to really say much about The Memory of Souls because yeah, it's a third book in a fantasy series. But I love the series. It's super complex. It has a complex structure. But as the series progresses, it does become more comprehensible. Though I do feel like I've missed a few things like in the... That, were, that should have been made clear to me in the first book and that I was just like, okay, um, I don't, I'm not fully getting it, but it will become clearer throughout the series. And now I feel like I probably should have paid more attention at that point in time. But I will definitely reread the whole series before I dive into the fifth book whenever that one is published. But apart from that, I basically just continued on in a few other books that I've been in the middle of. And then I watched The Parent Trap. I don't know. I was in a very nostalgic mood. So I rewatched The Parent Trap, which is like a childhood favorite. I mean, I never thought it was a great movie or anything like that, but I really loved that movie. Wanted to learn poker because of that movie. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> I did t take away the good parts of the movie clearly. But so yeah, um, that's going to be it for this video. I did a decent amount of reading, I would say. Finished Memory of Souls this week and I DNF'd the Snow Leopard or what it was called, The Art of Patience. Searching for the Snow Leopard in Tibet is the English title. I DNF'd that one. And so, yeah, diving into the new week, I will probably focus on Master of Sorrows, another fantasy during this week. And I've also started to pick up Juliet Naked by Nick Hornby, which will be like my morning read. So I won't be finishing that next week normally, but I'll include some of my thoughts on that.